set of instructions i feel like introducing you to the different addressing modes this topic is not that important from programming point of view but it may be a trouble in university exams so let's discuss this topic with the examples of the instructions from the previous video go watch that video first if you haven't already the link is provided up here in the i button and also down in the description box and if you have come to this channel for the first time be sure to subscribe it may be very helpful for you so without further ado let's start the topic now let's see what are addressing modes the addressing mode is one aspect that specifies the way of mu p gets to know where the operand is it may be within a register or in a memory location that memory location can be specified in uh, the instruction itself in several ways depending on the various ways there happens to be four to five kinds of addressing modes that is register mode of addressing immediate mode of addressing direct and indirect mode of addressing and the last one not so popular but implicit mode of addressing so let's check what addressing modes do all of these instructions have let's see them one by one in case of the first instruction you know the operand that means the data is present in b that has to be copied in the a register so the data is present in some sort of register so this particular instruction happens to have an addressing mode called register mode of addressing next instruction is mov a comma m so the data is present in m register so what is m register it is not a physical location it is simply the content of a particular memory location that is pointed by hl register pair so you see that the data is actually present in the memory and its location is given in an indirect way that is it is present in some sort of memory pointer kind of things so this particular instruction happens to have an indirect mode of addressing next is mov m comma a so the data is present in a that particular data has to be copied in some sort of memory register that is nothing but the content of the memory location that is pointed by hl pair so the data happens to be present in accumulated that is a register so it is a register mode of addressing next instruction is mvi a comma 25x so you can see that this data is already given in the instruction as a whole itself so in this case we call this kind of addressing mode an immediate mode of addressing and to make your life a little more simple i will tell you a little trick that whenever you come across an i in the instruction that means that instruction happens to be in immediate mode of addressing similarly in this case also you already know that this instruction is going to have an immediate mode of addressing lxi is a different instruction than mvi and before knowing anything else anything else you already know that this is going to have an immediate mode of addressing because you can find an i in here and let's see what it does it simply writes this value this 1600 hex in the register pair de so the data is already in the instruction itself so this is going to be immediate addressing mode anyway next instruction is lda 1600x what this instruction does is it loads the accumulator from some particular memory location having an address 1600x so the data is present in the memory location and the memory location and its address is already given in the instruction itself so in this case the location of the data is directly given in the instruction so this instruction is going to have a direct mode of addressing next instruction is sta 2000x so again the memory location where the data has to be stored is directly given in the instruction itself so it is going to have a direct mode of addressing next lhld 3000x in this case again you know that hl pair has to be loaded from the memory location 3000 and the consecutive 3001 hex so the memory location of the data is already given in the instruction so it is also going to have a direct mode of addressing next shld 3000x similar to lhld you know that 
the content of HL pair has to be stored somewhere that address is already given. So this is going to be a direct mode of addressing. Next LDAX B, what does it do? LDAX means it has to load the accumulator from a particular memory location. That memory location, that, that address is already given in BC pair. So the address of the data is not directly given but inside some sort of register. So the mode is going to be indirect here. Similarly to stacks, you have to store the content of accumulator in a particular memory location pointed by BC register pair. So this is also going to have an indirect mode of addressing. PCHL. Now here is something I want to talk about. PCHL means the data is present in HL pair. HL is what? A register. So it is going to have a register mode of addressing. But at the same time, as you can see that PCHL is itself an instruction. It does not carry any kind of operand in here. In this kind of cases, you can also say that this is kind of implicit mode of addressing because after decoding this particular instruction, MUP already knows what it has to do. It has to copy the content of AHL and put it into PC, that is a program counter. Similar words go for SPHL. It is going to have a registered mode of addressing and as well as implicit mode of addressing. XCAG. So here what happens? The contents of DE register pair and HL register pair gets exchanged. So the data comes from registers. Okay. So this is going to have a registered mode of addressing as well as you know already what else you can say that is it belongs to an implicit mode of addressing. Next XTHL, similar words go for it as well. Um, because the one of the data comes from HL register pair that is responsible for the register mode of ad addressing and at the same time you can say that uh, another set of data comes from the top of the stack and that does not have a name of a register. Okay, so this is kind of ambiguous to tell that this instruction has a register mode of addressing. You better tell that this is an implicit mode of addressing because after decoding this instruction without waiting for any further operands the MUP already knows what it has to do. It simply has to exchange the contents of HL register pair with the top of this stack. Let's wrap up this video. If you find that the data is present in some sort of register or registered pair that means that particular instruction is considered to be in register mode of addressing. Okay, and that register has to be specified in the instruction itself, like in MOV A comma B. The data is present in the B register that has to be copied in the accumulator. So this MOV instruction is going to be uh, in register mode of addressing. In XCHG, okay, I have already told you that they also considered to be in implicit mode of addressing, but uh, let us discuss its aspect as a register mode of addressing first. In XCH instruction, the data is present in DE pair and HL pair both and those two data are exchanged. Okay, so as the data is present in register pair, that also signifies that XCH instruction belongs to register mode of addressing. Next, in case to find some sort of number within the instruction, then you should not jump to a conclusion. You should look for an I in the instruction mnemonic. Instruction mnemonic means this MVIA. That means uh, this is the mnemonic MVI that is uh, considered to be move immediately. A is the first operand, and this data, whatever data you write, uh, hexadecimal number, that is to be the second operand. So if you find a number here, that means you should look for an I in the instruction mnemonic. And as in here, you can find an I that surely signifies that this MVI instruction belongs to immediate mode of addressing. In LXI D also, the D register pair, DE register pair is going to be loaded with a 16-bit data and this is also a data, not an address because you can find an I in here and X stands for register pair. So D is not D in here, D, e, D stands for DE register pair. Okay. Next, if you think that the data is present in some memory location and that memory location is directly specified in the instruction. That means that instruction is going to be in direct mode of addressing. Why? Because uh, you see 
uh, in LDA instruction, this mnemonic has to be followed by some sort of number and not an 8 bit number, it has to be a 16 bit number. Okay, and how do you conclude that this is an address and not a data? Because you cannot find an I in here in the mnemonic. Okay, so the accumulator has to be loaded from a memory location. That means that memory location has the data and which memory location to be specific that particular memory location whose address is given in the instruction. So the instruction has the address directly in it. So this instruction is going to be in direct addressing mode. In LHLD also, uh, the HL pair has to be loaded with um, some sort of data and that data is present in two consecutive memory locations. One is given in the instruction itself. The other is you just add one with this particular memory address and you find you have the next one. Next, if the data is present in some sort of memory location, but the address of the location is stored in some sort of registered pair or anywhere else, but it is certainly not specified directly in the instruction, that means that instruction is going to be in indirect mode of addressing. Such as in LDAX B, where you have the location inside BC registered pair. You may have a question that why we have uh, two different instructions for the same sort of job. Because with LDAX B also, you are loading the accumulator from some memory location and, and in LDA also, you are loading the accumulator from some sort of memory location. But you should notice that the location is present in some sort of variable. The variable is BC registered pair 16-bit placeholder. Okay, so you can change this particular variable's value in course of your program if you need it. Suppose you need to add 10 consecutive numbers that are stored in 10 consecutive locations. Okay, then what do you think you are going to do if you are using LDA? You have to load accumulator from 10 different different locations. Then you have to write LDA 3000 if the starting address is 3000 for example. Then you have to write LDA 3000, then LDA 3001, LDA 3002 up to LDA 3009. But this is going to be a very bad choice. So what you write, you put this instruction in a loop, start the BC registered pair with the starting address that is going to be 3000x. Every iteration, you increment the value of BC registered pair. That means for the first iteration, the value of registered pair BC is going to be 3000. For the second iteration, it is going to be 3001. That means for the second iteration, the accumulator will load it from the value that is stored in the 3000x all the way up to 3009 if you can iterate the loop 10 times. Okay, so this is the significance of indirect mode of addressing. We are going to use this mode of addressing very often and this particular instruction very often whenever we are going to write our first program. Uh, okay, so the next instruction is MOV A comma M. This example is also suitable for indirect mode of addressing because uh, the data is present in M register and M is not a physical location, it is a memory pointer. So the MUP will go to the HL register pair, see whatever location whatever memory location it is pointing to pick up the value from that memory location and put it into accumulator so the data is present in such a memory location that is pointed by h register pair that means the address is not directly given in the instruction so this instruction is also going to have an indirect mode of addressing next you have this not so popular kind of addressing mode but if you think that a particular um, instruction is in implicit mode of addressing then you should check for an operand and if you do not have an operand following the instruction mnemonic then you are nearly sure that that instruction may be in implicit mode of addressing but uh, this XCHG and XTHL these are two very good examples of implicit mode of addressing. Hope you guys like this video let me know your feedback down below at the comment box and if you wish like share and subscribe it's really encouraging see you in the next video where we shall cover the arithmetic set of instructions. Take care. Bye.